Hi there, it's Brooke Center here. During times like these, I find that it is important to focus on positive things and people who are doing good in the world. There are so many heroes from throughout history, and there are even new heroes stepping up every day. Today, we are going to learn about a, a hero from the past, then later we will talk about heroes in the present. Today you will also have the opportunity to think of a hero in your life, somebody that you think is doing something great, maybe they're even helping with the coronavirus. This is important because we should always make an effort to honor the heroes of both the past and the present. We're going to read a book about a hero from the past, but before we read the book, let's talk about what a hero is. The dictionary defines a hero as a person who is admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. Okay, so now that we've learned what a hero is, I want to know, what is a hero to you? I like that answer. Well, to me, a hero is somebody who does what is right and not what's easy. Now that we've talked about what a hero is, we're going to read a book about a hero from the past. This book is about Golda Meir. Here is a picture of Golda Meir. Golda Meir was born in 1898. That's exactly 100 years before I was born. And she immigrated from Ukraine to America. She became a teacher and then moved to the Palestine with her husband, where she became the first female prime minister of the nation. That's pretty cool. She lived until 1978. How many years is that? That's right, 80 years. Let's learn some more about her now through this book. Goldie Takes a Stand, Golda Meir's First Crusade by Barbara Krasner and illustrated by Kelsey Gary Riley. Will the meeting please come to order? I announced to the girls crowded into our two-room Walnut Street apartment. It was the first meeting of the American Young Sister Society, a group of Jewish immigrants from Russia. I. Goldie Mabuez naturally appointed myself president. In the room was my little sister Clara, my best friend Regina, my neighbor Belle and her sister Frida, my classmate Lillian, and others. I had called a meeting to discuss textbooks. The kids in our school don't have enough money to buy them, I explained. They need our help. Have you seen Jaime's books? asked Regina. He says he's the third person in his family to use it. It's missing half the pages. Jenny keeps peeking over my shoulder to see my book, Frida said. I wish she'd get her own. How much money do we have to raise? asked Belle. Three cents a week, I said, from each of us. As the best math student in the whole fourth grade, naturally it was up to me to figure this out. Lillian groaned. Goldie, that's too much. A loaf of bread costs three cents. So does a quart of milk, added Sarah. If Goldie thinks we can do it, we can, said Regina. But when the meeting was over, I wondered where Clara and I would get six cents each week. Then I knew what I had to do. Every morning before school, I worked at Mama's grocery store while she went to the farmer's market. The next day, when Mrs. Plotkin came to the counter with a quart of milk, I told her, My friends and I are trying to raise money to buy school books for kids who can't afford them. So your milk will be five cents today, please. Your mother only charges three cents, she protested, but she reached into her purse and handed me a nickel. Goldie, such a doer you are, she said, pinching my cheek. Five cents for the bread, I told Mrs. Margulis. Poor kids need an education. He, told, he pulled his worn leather wallet out of his pocket, but four cents was all he had, and I couldn't take it. I counted Mrs. Garfinkel's eggs. There were six. Ten cents, I told her. I'm trying to raise money for school books for kids who can't afford them. Hrumph! Your mother only charges a penny a piece. That's all I'm paying, she snapped. She grabbed her eggs and stomped out the door. But despite all my efforts, at the end of the week, Clara and I still hadn't raised our share. As president of the society, I listed our options. I could help kids with their math, but no one had money to pay for tutoring. I could get a job as a junior sales girl downtown, but Mama needed me before school, and Clara needed me after. Then I knew what to do. I decided we would have to give up something we loved. When Mama gave us each a penny for candy, I told Clara we'd have to do without. 
Do without candy? Clara sniffled. I nodded. Think of the good deed you're doing. But by the next meeting, no one had raised enough money. We need to think bigger, I said. We'll hold a public meeting, a fundraising gala, and collect from everyone at one time. We can make invitations, offered Frida. We can put together a list of important people to invite, suggested Lillian. Good ideas, I said, and naturally I'll give a speech. Where will we put so many people, Sarah asked. I knew just what to do. The next day I headed to Packin Hall, the only place large enough to hold our event. What do you want? A man in a fancy business suit asked me. I'm here to see the owner. I need to borrow the hall for a public event, I said. You're talking to him. I'm Goldie Mabuez, and I'm the president of the American Young Sister Society. I told him about our cause. In the end, he donated the hall to us, still shaking his head. We wrote invitations and painted posters on butcher paper. All that was left was my speech. For the first time, I didn't know what to do. Write it down, Mama said. Then you won't forget anything. Night after night, I struggled, but the words wouldn't come. When the time came, I would just have to speak from my heart. The night of our event, I peeked out from behind the Packin Hall stage curtain. Mama and Papa sat in the front row. The young sisters and their parents sat beside them. But where were the rest of the people? People with actual money? Knots formed in my stomach and throat, but I was president. So I took a deep breath, stepped on the stage, and began. Imagine what it feels like to sit in your classroom without a textbook. You can't follow the teacher. You can't do your work. Education is the only way for us to lift ourselves out of poverty. I paused when I noticed our school principal push through the double doors in the back of the hall and take a seat. The superintendent was with him. Then a handful of teachers appeared, and a sprinkling of parents. Then Mrs. Plotkin and Mr. Margulis. Even Mr. Garfinkel. People kept coming, dozens of them. The way we see it, I continued, my voice growing stronger, it's the community's responsibility to help Milwaukee kids who can't afford school books. I ask each of you to look into your hearts and wallets and give what you can. When I finished, everyone leaped up and started clapping. Regina led the young sisters through the aisles with their collection baskets. Men pulled out their wallets, women opened their purses, and even Mrs. Garfinkel gave a couple of coins. We raised a lot of money, I said as we walked home afterwards. Mama grinned. I guess that means the Un-American Sister Society is out of business. The truth, wa the truth was, I'd been thinking about a new society. One to raise money to teach English to immigrants. I knew just what to do, and naturally, I'd be president. The End Wow, wasn't that a great book? What do you think made Goldie a hero? That's a good answer. I think that her courage to stand up for the people that needed something made her a hero. Did you notice her age? In this book, she's young. That means that anyone can be a hero at any age. Yes, that means even you. Now that we've read this book and learned about a hero from the past, we're going to think about heroes from the present. Let's review. What is a hero? Great job, that's right. A hero is admired for courage or outstanding achievements. Great job. I encourage you now to think of a hero in your own life. Maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a character in a movie or a book, or maybe it's somebody you've seen on the news lately. One of my heroes during this time is the doctors and nurses who are helping save the people who are fighting the coronavirus right now. I'm going to honor them today. I'm going to honor them by drawing a picture of them. Now I'm going to draw a picture of my hero. So um, as you can see, I'm writing my hero at the top and this is what you can do for yours too. And for mine, I'm gonna be drawing a doctor. So um, now's the time when you can start working on your drawing and whoever that is, you can draw however you'd like. Um, here, I just included like the doctor's hat with the doctor's symbol and while you can watch me draw this, um, I encourage you to work on yours and just think about what really makes this person a hero. Why are you grateful for what they did? What are they doing to help? Um, just think about that as you watch this drawing or you work on yours and 
um, after I ended up adding some colors to mine so though I did not show that in the video I encourage you to add colors to yours and now you can see I'm writing some words I wrote brave hardworking and smart and these are just a few of the words that I brainstormed that describe my hero and then I wrote thank you and here is my finished drawing I hope you enjoyed that drawing now, I encourage you to draw a picture of your hero. Something that would be really special too is if you gave your picture to your hero. If it's someone in your family, you can give it to them. Or if it's someone else, maybe you can mail it to them. Or you could even tape it on your front door. Then others could see who your hero is. Show the world who your hero is. Thank you all so much for watching today. I am so happy we were able to learn about heroes together. Who did we learn about at the beginning? Oh yeah, thanks for reminding me. Golda Meir. She is a true hero. I am grateful for people like Golda and the doctors and nurses today. I encourage you to share your hero with someone. And remember, a hero can be anyone. We're all heroes in our own ways. Bye. See you next time.